now that we've got most of the equipment that we need to cast the bronze, there's some hand tools that are going to be needed. Unfortunately, a lot of them I've already had. Uh, the only thing I really needed to buy was one tool. Uh, the one thing that I don't have that I can make is called a rammer. And that is what I'm going to make first. So let's check out how I made it. Before we get started building our ramming tool, I should mention that there are two basic methods to casting bronze. The first is the lost wax method, and that's typically what an artist would use. And that is the method that I taught when I taught at the university. The second method is sand casting, and sand casting is typically an industrial application to casting metal. And in fact, most all marine bronze is cast with the sand casting method. I had the opportunity in 2005 to be invited to a stainless steel casting symposium in Norway. So take a look. In the summer of 2005, I was one of four sculptors invited to a symposium in Norway to create and cast stainless steel sculptures. Two of us were from the US and two were from Norway. The symposium took place at the Scana Stainless Steel Foundry in Jorpland. Jorpland is the center of the Strand municipality and is located on the western coast of the mainland, about 20 kilometers northeast of the city of Stavanger. Here I am on top of Prekestolen, known as Pulpit Rock, overlooking Ilisforden. The main products that Scana, now known as Stavanger Steel, produces are ship propellers and mining equipment. We lived in the factory and were allowed access to the foundry to cast two metric tons of stainless steel each and all of the scrap that we could find. We worked together in the workshop helping each other solve problems. We began the process by creating patterns in styrofoam. Here are a couple of patterns I created. The workers at the foundry were very helpful and excited to see our creations. We then invested the patterns in sodium silicate sand, known as water glass. You can see me here filling this monstrous flask with sand. Once left overnight, the sand hardened. Once the molds were ready, the stainless steel was poured through a bottom feed crucible. After the molds were cooled, the sprues and gates were cut off, ground down, cleaned up, and delivered to our workshop ready for assembly. Here I am welding these two large castings together. I ultimately completed two sculptures that, as a part of the agreement, remained in, in Europland permanently. It was a tremendous opportunity and I learned an immense amount about molding with sand. Now to get started with our ramming tool, you can see by these examples that they're, they come in a variety of sizes. Typically they're made out of wood, but sometimes they're made out of aluminum. Now the one thing that they all have in common is they have a flat end on one side and a pointed end on the other. So to get started, I put together a drawing. Now this ramming tool that I'm going to build is going to be nine and a quarter inches long and one and three quarter inches wide. So in order to get started, I need to go over to my wood stash and pick out a piece of wood to start building it. Well, over here at my lumber rack, you can see I've got lots and lots of things to choose from. And I have a uh, small box here of some specialty woods. Uh, like this is a piece of elm, that's definitely the right uh, dimensions and so forth. Um, there's a piece of purple heart here, a uh, piece of oak. Um, I think this is actually a piece of cherry or something like that. That's a little too thin. Um, and of course I've got lots and lots of walnut available to me. But I don't think I really need to use any kind of fancy hardwood for this. So I did find this piece of... Uh, pine in here and you can see it's 
It's pretty clean, it doesn't really have any knots in it, and it's very tight grained. Uh, it's really, you know, it looks like it's about, uh, you know, three by four, or something like that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a piece of that for my ramming tool. So I'll get that pulled out of there and, and get uh, cutting it down.
Well, now that I've got the ramming tool all finished up, let me tell you what some of these other things are. Uh, the first thing that I did have to purchase was a Riddler. And the Riddler is basically a sieve that you can put the sand in and you riddle the sand across the pattern first so that you have a nice fine sand that's right on the surface of the pattern. So I didn't have uh, a sieve, the one that I had had long gone somewhere else, so I, I did purchase a new one. They're not very expensive, uh, and they come with different size mesh screens in there, and I got one that was fairly fine. Now the other thing that I do have were some slicks and spoons, and that's what these items here are. And you can see that it's actually sort of spoon shaped that you can uh, dig out the sand and they're all you know different sizes and shapes so that they can be used for different spots where you're uh, uh, doing a little like adding the uh, sprues and runners and so forth to the um, mold. Uh, a trowel is always nice to have. The brush is used to get loose sand away from your pattern and your, keep your mold clean. So the next thing is the flask, and the flask is made up of two parts, which is called the cope and the drag. And the drag is the bottom part of what the mold would be sitting in, and the cope is the top part. And you'll see more about how this is put together uh, in when I start actually doing the sand casting. But basically, the bottom, you put the pattern in, and then you put the top half of the pattern in, and you'd put the cope on top of it like so, and then fill that up with sand. So uh, this flask is maybe a little big for some of the parts. It certainly will be usable for uh, some of the uh, bigger pieces, but I might have to make some smaller flasks for uh, some of the small parts that we'll be making. So the next pieces of equipment that we're going to talk about that are far too overlooked is safety equipment. So let me show you what personal protection gear is needed to cast bronze. So I used to be a big fan of Norm Abrams' New Yankee Workshop, and I remember one of the things that he always said was that there's no piece of equipment more important than these safety glasses. So this is true with casting bronze as well. There's no more important piece of equipment than your personal protection gear. And essentially, what we need to cast bronze is to cover ourselves with leather or some kind of fire retardant material. So to start with, what I have are a piece, a pair of, it's an apron with chaps built in. So this goes on like so. And it fastens around my legs. So you can see it does pretty good protection for the majority of me. Now the one thing that is really important are my feet. And I always wear steel-toed shoes at all times whenever I'm in my shop. But in addition to the steel-toed shoes, I have some spats here. And these are for going over your shoe like so, and the leather wraps around. Like that. Now once you've got the feet covered, then the next thing is to cover my arms. And I've got a leather jacket here that I wear for that. So now you can see I'm pretty well covered with leather. Uh, the other thing that I, of course, will use is a pair of gloves for my hands. Uh, and the final thing is then to protect my head and face. And I have a hard hat here that has a splash shield attached to it. And a splash shield moves up and down like this so that uh, when you're um, ready to pour, you can pull it down. And what it is, it's made up of very fine uh, mesh that 
reflects the heat away from your face. It also protects if there's actually some kind of a, uh, if there, the metal were to pop or something like that and splash. Um, the other thing, because it's being a screen, it doesn't get too much heat build up so that it's very comfortable to wear. So now that I've got headgear, hand gear and covered with leathers, um, we're ready to cast bronze. Well, now that I've got my tools and equipment pulled together, the next thing I need is some supplies and the most important thing I need is some bronze. So in the next episode, we're gonna take a field trip to Bradley University uh, and visit my friend Fisher Stoltz, who is the professor of sculpture there. And we're gonna hopefully see them cast some bronze and he's gonna sell me some scrap that is off of some of the students, the spruce and gates off of some of the students' work. So that's all coming up in the next episode. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you the next time on The Art of Boat Building. <laughs>